question five then from paper two of the 2017 New Higher Maths. Here we go, nine marks for a vector's question. Here's a diagram. So there's various pathways you can travel along. You're given the vectors for two of them here. Unfortunately, you've been given them in this form in terms of the unit base vectors. Say unfortunately because it takes more writing, doesn't it? Than just putting them down nicely in terms of the components in a column vector. Anyway, and you have to write, answer them that way. But anyway, the first mark, part for two marks is express PQ in this form. So it has to be in that form. Don't put it in that form and you won't get one of the marks out of the two. Well, how can you get from P to Q? You can only travel along paths that you know, and these are the paths that I know. So I could go from P to R, I know it, and R to Q. Oh, that's it then, isn't it? That's fairly straightforward. Go from P to R, and then go from R to Q. Writing that down gets the first mark. Now the second mark would be then I've got to add them together. I don't really want to write all of that plus all of that. I think, according to the marking scheme, you could just add them up and put them down for the second mark. You could put them in component form and then add them up and then write them out again, but that'd be even more work. Oh, maybe I'll just write it all down. It's a real pain. Pretty sure you wouldn't need to do this. So add them together then, which I think you could just have done straight away. 9 and negative 12. I'm not even looking at this, I'm just going to do that. 9 take away 12 is negative 3i. 5 minus 9 is minus 4j. And 2 plus 3 is 5. So 5k. Putting that down gets the second mark. B. Extra bit of information. S divides QR in the ratio of 1 to 2. Show that PS is given by this vector expressed again in terms of the unit base vectors for two marks. Well, normally when you look at that you think, ah, you could use that section formula for instance. And in fact you could. You could treat P as the origin because it'd be two times the PQ and one times the PR. And then take a third of it, since the one and the two make three parts, and work it through that way. But that just comes from following a basic pathway anyway, which is a, a more direct understanding of how these things work. If it's asking for PS, then you would think, how can you get from P to S? It's the same with the section formula, only there it's how do you get from the origin to S. How do you get from P to S? I'll go to a point that I know and then follow a path that I know. So you can either go from P to Q, then Q to S, or P to R, then R to S. You already found P to Q, so you may as well go that way. Go from P to Q, and then go from Q to S. And importantly, Q to S is one out of three bits. It's one third of the way from Q to R. That fraction is the important part here. Realising that fraction of one third gets you the first mark. You could state it separately, but I've incorporated it in the pathway, which is part of the way towards the second mark. Now, I think I'll just write this in column form. PQ was negative three, negative four, five. QR, well, I've got RQ. RQ goes the opposite way, so instead of negative 12, I'll make it a 12. Instead of negative 9, I'll make it a 9. Instead of 3, I'll make it a negative 3. So that's negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And 5 minus 1 is 4. But it said, show that it equals this. So I'll write it back that way. 1 lot of i minus 1 lot of j plus 4 lots of k. There's the second mark. Part C, that's probably the bit you've been waiting for. Find the size of angle Q, P, S. Oh, that's that angle up here. Five marks, angle between two vectors. You're using the scalar product in both forms, but you need the vectors radiating away. That's why you've previously worked out P, Q and P, S. So, just depends how much you need to put down. So what you've got is, you could probably go in with it straight away, I think. You've got the cosine of that angle which is QPS. 
is equal to the scalar product of PQ and PS, so PQ dot PS, divided by the magnitude of PQ times the magnitude of PS. Now, just writing that doesn't get you any marks. You need to work all the bits out. So you can see what the five marks are. One for the scalar product, one for this magnitude, one for that magnitude, one for putting all the numbers into the formula, and one for the answer. So it's just a case of where will you work them out? Will I work them out? All inside it, will I do it separately? Maybe I'll do it separately to the side. Right, what about the scalar product? PQ dot PS will equal, have I got enough room? Now they're here, they're here side by side. They're in this form, but you can still see the numbers. Negative 3 times 1 plus negative 4 times negative 1. I'm just going to have to break through here. Plus, I'll just put them all in my brackets, 5 times 4. Oh, and out the other side. So the scalar product then is negative 3 plus 4 plus 20, which equals 21. Doing that gets a mark. Now the magnitudes. Magnitude of PQ, the square root of the component squared. Might as well be rigorous. I know negative 3 squared is the same as 3, and I'd probably just do 3 squared. But I think I'll just put down negative 3 squared, negative 4 squared, 5 squared. Now, I don't need to suppose I need to go through all the bits and pieces like that. That's going to be the square root of... That's 9 and 16 is 25, and 25 is the square root of 50. Now that does simplify, but as well just leaving like that because it's just going to be put into your calculator. Doing that gets a mark. That is 25 times 2, it is 5 root 2. But I would just leave it like that. PS, what's the magnitude of PS? Well, that's just 1 squared and negative 1 squared, again, being rigorous there, plus 4 squared. Although it's the same as 1 squared plus. In fact, you don't even need to put those in. You could just jump in straight with the squares. 1 plus 1 plus 16. 9 plus 16 plus 25. And that gives the square root of 1, 1, 16, 18. That gets a mark. Yes, that's equal to 9 times 2. So that's 3 root 2. So you've got 21 over root 50 times root 18. Now, that does work out to be quite a neat number. You could replace that with a nice little integer there. But it's not really going to gain you anything, because in order to find out that, you have to do the inverse cos of this thing. You'd be typing it into your calculator anyway. And the handy thing about typing it in is, the product of the roots is the root of the product. You can just put 50 times 18 in there when you type it in. Now it's just press the buttons, and you get... 45.572 and so on. So I'll put that down as 45.6 degrees. Now if I had to put degrees in, because it just said the angle, and I suppose technically you could do it in radians instead. If your calculator was set to radians and you couldn't be bothered changing it afterwards, you could just put whatever it was, radians. But normally you would set it into degrees, and with degrees it would be one decimal place. So Putting it in gets you one mark, the f and the final answer gets you the fifth mark. Just again about this point here about them giving you a mark for leaving it as root 50 instead of changing it to, of course, 25, 2, which is 5 root 2, and 9, 2, which is 3 root 2. The reasoning would be those aren't final answers. Those are just the numbers that are being fed in. Certainly with those numbers, this becomes a very neat little fraction, because 21 over and 5 root 2 times 3 root 2, root 2 times root 2 makes 2, you've actually got 10 and that knocks that down to 7, that just becomes 7 tenths for that. But in the end it doesn't gain you anything because you're just using your calculator and this is the final result.